Welcome to Sidewalk Mosaic. <laughs> All right, we got some folks that just came in. We have a couple of new people. We have a few folks online. And I'm, I'm pleased that Sandy is going to spend the next hour, hour and a half with us. There's, there'll be time for questions. Yes, got some slides. Now, I've, I've known Sandy, what, 10 years or more? <laughs> uh, back when, when we both worked at the INL. Uh, Sandy's a lifelong learner. This past year, she learned how to make a sidewalk mosaic. She's here to share that experience and what she's learned. After the class, she'll forward a list of materials you'll need for your own mosaic project. So there's no need to take notes on the materials list. Perfect. Perfect. Take it away, Sandy. All right. All right. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're all here. I was surprised <laughs> that there were so many people that were interested. Um, I made this uh, sidewalk mosaic you want it, no. about this time last year. And so Steve is going to put that slide up. And here is the mosaic in my yard. So about May last year, I made this. Um, yeah, that's a good, good yeah, idea. It'll have to be back there. I'm going to have to experiment with it. Okay, we're just going to wait a moment for those people online. We're going to do something with the lights here just so that maybe the pictures are a little bit better. Is that better? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So again, like I said, I made this uh, sidewalk mosaic about this time last year in my yard. Uh, how do we go to the next slide again? All right. And I call this my trout stream. Just just click it. I don't know what happened. So this is about six feet long by about two and a half feet wide. And it's a, just a little walkway between my driveway and our house, which is where the shutoff is for our water supply, where the hose is connected. So I just have some spot that, uh, that was not done before. Okay, hey, you want to go to the next slide? So where did I get my inspiration? Well, I looked at Pinterest. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> no, these are not mine. These are Pinterest. And look at how beautiful they are. It's so complex and so big. And, and uh, I was very fascinated with them. And that's the reason that I uh, decided I wanted to make it. Here's another one. Uh, but if you have something like this, you're going to have to hire a contractor. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you're going to do this on your own. So where's my inspiration? We've recently taken up uh, drift boat fishing. The last several years, my husband and I spend a fair amount of time drift boat fishing, and this became my inspiration, a little trout. So this was a good one for me. So I want you to know right up front that I didn't do this alone. <laughs> That's my husband right there. <laughs> and. I would say, was he willing, my willing helper? Um, this took us about two weekends worth of work. One weekend to kind of prep the site and then one weekend to lay in the, uh, uh, lay in the mosaic. But I will say that uh, what, what's really important about this is not only was he willing to help me, but he was a former Mason. So he knows all about things like concrete and specimens and these kinds of things. So um, you probably don't need a mason to do your own sidewalk mosaic, but I'm here to tell you that it's also good to have help, especially for the physical aspect. So the next one. 
So, um, like I said, we did this over two weekends, and one weekend was prep, and one weekend was really putting in the mosaic. And this is where I have to say the wise advice of Bruce came in handy here. See, um, he was not willing to jump into this project without a plan. <laughs> now, I have a tendency to start projects, not fully knowing where I'm going, but you know, I can start and I'm pretty good at starting, but his view is you gotta have a plan before you start. So uh, that was his comment to me. And so what I did is I started searching on Pinterest and I looked at all these beautiful mosaics. I actually looked in a couple books that showed me pictures of the floor mosaics for those of you who have traveled internationally and gone to Europe. And they have these beautiful mosaic floors from like the third century in some of these mosques. I looked at all of those. Again, very, very complex, took thousands of people, um, and that would create a long time. But what I did is because I was inspired by a, a trout, I looked for pictures of trout that I could basically trace the silhouette of that trout, and that could be the basis for my plan. So a sidewalk mosaic is pretty much like a recipe. Uh, first, you look around for something that you like, right? And you say, flipping through a magazine, you say, hey, I really like that. I, I'm going to make that. And then you start looking for a recipe for that. And that's what you do for a sidewalk mosaic. And then you kind of go back and forth between the two because as you're going into the recipe, sometimes you look in the recipe and say, oh man, it has so many ingredients and it takes so long. And I don't know if I <laughs> want to make that. So then you go back and you look for another recipe. And the and the sidewalk mosaic's kind of the same thing. Basically, what I was looking for was uh, doing something that in the end I could actually get through and get done um, and reach the end result. So when you get a recipe, right, a recipe is you now know what you're looking for and what does a recipe do? It tells you how long it's going to take, tells you all the ingredients and all the materials that you need, and then it tells you the steps to do that, right? And um, sometimes you have to keep going back and forth until you find the exact one. And that's what I did with the sidewalk mosaic. So the next thing that um, you have to know is, just like a recipe, it gets too complex, gets too big. <laughs> you know, you, you, you decide you're going to do a, a sidewalk mosaic and you've got from there to there, right? or from here to all the way to the back of the room, it's too big, it's too complex, it's too difficult. So it's gonna cost you more money, it's gonna take you more time, it's gonna cost you more material. So smaller is better, you have a simpler plan. Start out, if you're not a contractor already doing sidewalk yeah. mosaics, start out with something that you actually uh, could manage. And I was looking for something, by the way, that didn't cost me a fortune. I didn't, I didn't want to invest in, in this for a lot. So the very first thing after you've decided what you're going to make and you've got, you, now you're going to get your recipe, you need to assemble your material. So for, for a sidewalk mosaic, over on the left there, you can see there's a trowel. You probably need a trowel. If you if you don't have a trowel, you could probably borrow one because trust me, most masons have hundreds of them <laughs> and they don't use them steady. So there are probably a lot of them in their garage. Um, there's some rubber gloves. You might think about rubber gloves. You need a wheelbarrow and that's in the middle there. And it's probably a good idea. You could use a five gallon bucket, but mixing things is pretty much easier in a wheelbarrow. And there's a shovel there. You have to do that. Now in the middle, then you've got to buy some materials, right? So up the upper right-hand corner, see where it says spec mix? That is the material, the mortar that you use where you're going to 
press your mosaic tiles into that spec mix. And I just had Bruce look it up, it costs about 20 bucks a bag nowadays. It didn't last year, but now it does. You also need probably some sackcrete. See where it says concrete mix sets? About $10 a bag. And for that little spot that I had, that used four, five bags of, of concrete. And I'll show you what we use that for. And for the spec mix, we probably yeah. used maybe about three of them. Then you can see these two things in the middle, one yellow bag in the middle, and then those three buckets there. Sometimes when you're going to make a mosaic, you don't want that mortar to be just like your regular sidewalk color. So you can, you can dye it, and you can get it in a reddish or a black or a beige, kind of a gold color. You can, you can buy these dyes. You don't need a lot of it, but it does give you some nice contrast, and it's something to consider. And then over in the upper left, there is a bottle, what they call sealer. And that's after you're all done, you want to put that over the mosaic so that it, you know, kind of preserves it and protects it. I personally was after something else, so that's why I wanted to use that. And then over on the right there, on the far right, and you can't see it very well, but in the center there is a piece of construction paper. So remember I said I went on the internet and I found a trout that I like. And so I drew that on a piece of, piece of construction paper. And then I cut it out. So I wanted to have three of those. So I cut three out and I used that. And then you see those little trays of rocks, they're little tiny rocks. Those were my mosaic material. And I'll tell you where I got those. I went to the, is it gravel yard or, a, yeah, gravel yard right south of town here with my five gallon bucket. And they charged me 10 bucks to fill that bucket up with little rocks. Now, <clears throat> if you're gonna do a mosaic, my recommendation is you don't wanna have very big pieces right? Little pieces, maybe, maybe an inch, maybe sometimes smaller, but an inch is about as big as you want to go. So when you go to the gravel yard, unbeknownst to me, but <laughs> it's interesting. So they have these like concrete stanchions and you walk inside the, in, into the gravel yard and in each of those, they have like bins, right? Of different materials. And each of those has a different color rock. And so I went to the area where they had the little rocks and I collected some different color rocks. So I had kind of pink and yellow and green and whatever I needed for my mosaic. Just enough so I could fill that five gallon bucket. Let me just tell you right off the bat, I can't lift a five gallon <laughs> bucket with, with rocks. Again, another reason to have help, you know. Um, and and um, so so that's what I did. I got my materials. Now you might have different kind of materials, right? You might have. Um, here's an example. Have you ever seen people people have all these leftover tiles from their bathroom or from whatever they, you know, you can collect them. People give them to you, <laughs> so you can you can cut those up. You know how you, know, you buy them in a square, or you can go to the to the Home Depot and buy a square of tiles that you want and use those for part of your design. People will give you those if they have them left over. So that's something to consider. Um, and then you can see in the bottom right there, that little rose, that little rose is a knee pad and you need one. <laughs> or you need knee pads that you put on your legs because it's a lot of knee work. So you're going to spend a fair amount of time on your hands and knees. So you got to have something. So a lot of people who garden have one of these, but you're going to need one of those. Again, I will say the other thing, uh, concrete mix. You, can, you might not see it very clearly, but that bag weighs 80 pounds. When I look in the audience right here, 80 pounds is about half your weight. <laughs> so you need help. <laughs> You need help. Okay, now we are into the next. So, 
any project, it doesn't matter what project you do. Proper preparation makes a pretty product, right? It's all in the preparation. If you do a poor job of preparing, the end job is not that good. So you have to think about preparation. And preparation is important for a sidewalk because you know, you might be digging out there and there's some old, some tree roots and if you just cover that up, what do you think is going to happen? Break. Yeah, it's going to break. Um, if you have just muck in there or some uneven surface, you're going to pour lots of concrete in that 10 bucks a bag. It costs a lot of money. So you want to think about preparation. Now, this uh, picture here is the preparation that we did. This is again six feet. So we poured two strips of concrete, put some little frames around and poured, and then we also ended up pouring in the bottom because we dug pretty deep and we didn't want to put a lot of speck mix in there. But it's about this little lip you can see there. It's probably maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half deep. So that's about what you're thinking about for depth if you want to have your uh, your have your uh, depth of your sidewalk that you're going to push these push these things into. I will tell you that <clears throat> preparation is a lot of hard work. <laughs> This was a lot of shoveling, <laughs> a lot of mixing concrete. And Bruce helped me a lot because he's mixing concrete, the 80 bags, 80 pound bags of concrete, right? Now you don't mix the whole 80 pound bag all at once in a wheelbarrow, but you mix a spare amount of it. So you're gonna put that in there, you're gonna mix it up and then you're gonna pour it down. And so this is where you're going to use the trowel. This is where you do it. Now you probably, I don't know, and Bruce, you can comment here, but do you might not need to pour concrete in the bottom of your of your uh, sidewalk. Do you have a comment? Right. We just we held it down, but you see the two rail two uh, guide, uh, guidelines or rails there. We held it down uh, just uh, enough so that. Um, you can put a layer of mortar in there and then put the and put the, the pebbles into the mortar and it wouldn't sink out of sight they'd just be pouring on that or that uh, it, you know the mortar doesn't have gravel in it so it's just sand and it's sand and cement and mire and so there's no uh, other rocks you have to uh, deal with like you would if you uh, if you just poured that uh, concrete mix all the way to the top of it. And so you better you better stay a little bit down so your mosaic pattern will emerge at the top. Right. And uh, the one thing that I will say, no matter what you do, you're going to have to have some border, something on the edge. Now, some people use bricks. They put bricks along the edge, or some people would put bigger rocks, big rocks along the edge. We chose to pour concrete as an edge on that. But you have to have something because otherwise, as soon as you pour that mortar in there, it's gonna leak all out. It's gonna not, preparation, really, really important. All right, so now you have to look at your design. And remember I said, you can see up there, the, the construction paper that I, I cut out. Before you do anything, you want to see if that fits in your <laughs> in your sidewalk, right? You ever hear that there's a thing of, you know, cut once, measure, you know, measure twice, right? That's kind of the same story. You've got to make sure whatever you're going to do, whatever your design is, you've chosen your design, make sure it fits in there. So what I did is, you can kind of see up there on the right, I traced that and put it, put it on into the space just to make sure that it would fit. So I just made sure that I did it. Now, this is a part that took me a long time. I had those pieces of paper cut out on my drive. 
and I had a little stool and all my little rocks, colored rocks in different colors and these little pans. And then I started placing all of the little pieces until I liked the way it looked and it looked like a fish. So you can see here the tails, you can see the tails on the fish and the stripe or you know what you would see like in a rainbow trout or whatever. And so there's a couple different layouts there that I had them and I, um, and you can see the rocks. And again, they're about like this size. So once I got them all done, all laid out on the driveway, on the piece of paper that I want, then I'm happy, right? And that takes you a long time. I don't know. Some people, maybe if you're a better artist, <laughs> some people are good artists and, you know, they have an eye for things. I didn't have such an eye for color until after I started putting them in and I thought, no, well, that doesn't work. You know? So I, I was doing that, but make sure that it is all laid out and you know exactly what it looks like on your driveway or on your table or someplace before you get over to pouring mix. Because once you put it in, you're not going back. You can't, you can't go back. So the next part. So now we're into the next step. We prep the area. We're ready to roll. We've got the design. It's all laid out with the rocks. And now we have to <clears throat> mix the mortar or the spec mix. That's what we're going to put the mosaic into. Now, I, I thought we used four to five bags. You might, each bag of spec mix covers about a cubic foot. So you kind of play it by ear there, but who said we didn't use that many? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, we, it was only an inch or two thick, the top coat of mortar, and I think two feet wide, six feet long. So do the math there, you know, 144 cubic inches is a cubic foot of, of uh, concrete or, or spec mix. Yeah, so we used, we probably did two bags just because we, started to started to do it and then you know thought about it and whatever but you can see uh, <clears throat> it's in the wheelbarrow there so we put you cut that bag in half you make it in the in the wheelbarrow and you mix it with water um, and if you look on the, uh, and then in the in the middle there remember I said we wanted to dye it because it's a good idea to have a different color if you want to have a little contrast and it helps so we had this big bag, this big bag, that big yellow bag, and we used about a cup. <laughs> so that was kind of a lot, but you mix it up in a in a bucket of water, and and then you're going to pour it into the spec mix. And uh, <clears throat> the key thing here is now this is a recipe. This is an important thing about a recipe. If your first batch that you mix the more, mix the spec mix, you put a cup of this color in there. Now you're going to make the next batch. You're going to mix the next batch of spec mix in your wheelbarrow. And so how much are you going to put in for the dye? One cup. Yeah, you can't, you got to do the same every time. Otherwise, what's happened to your sidewalk is you get all kinds of different colors and different spots and it looks homemade. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> the thing over here on the right, you can see where we're pouring it in there and it should look a little different to you than if you saw somebody pouring concrete. And so you see people pouring concrete, you can see little rocks in concrete, you know, when they're pouring it. There's no little rocks in spec mix. And so when you add water to it, it gets, I want to say, it, the consistency is important. It's kind of frothy. And Bruce, do you want to comment about that? Because you were talking about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, um, the more water you put in, actually mix it, mixes uh, uh, mix with concrete or uh, cement and lime and makes it weak. But you got to have some water to make it plastic enough to to move it around. And so 
Um, you, you see that we held down an inch or so, or inch and a half or two, I'm not sure, I can't remember what. And then we put the, uh, the mortar in, and the mortar is, like I said, it, it's, it's sand and uh, cement and lime. Lime makes it, um, it they call it fluff stuff, makes it more plastic to work with. So then you, and then you pour that level with the top of our two rails, and then send it to, to the, uh, the, the rocks in. Right. And it, it's, it's a different consistency. It's fluffy, like, that's the, like you said, mm. it's like lime, and it, it, lime is what makes it kind of fluffy. So if you had too much water, it's not going to be very good, and you're going to have a problem. But if you don't have enough, then you won't be able to protect. Kind of like frosting. Yeah, kind of like frosting, <laughs> right? Right, just like the recipe, kind of like frosting, exactly. Okay. Okay. I could do a little bit. Okay. Okay. So now here we are. Uh, at the at the this is the moment of truth now you had your design it's sitting out there right right out there ready for you you, you mixed your spec mix and you poured it in there and you can see <clears throat> even though uh right over here on the on the left on the left hand side in that spec mix so i trawled it Trowel, we poured poured some in there, and then I troweled it smooth. But then I did take a tracing of my little construction paper thing, just on the outline. So because I wasn't going to do pre preform it again, right? So I used that construction paper and traced it, so I knew exactly where it was going to go. That would help me then when I start putting in the rocks, I know where they're going to go. So that was helpful. The thing here in the in the center is you can see where I push those rocks and you can kind of see how they're a little bit indented. And I and you see my knee pad there, that's really important. But the the thing that that was important for me is and, and important for you probably as well. Don't pour too much spec mix in there. And now you can't reach in there and you know you don't want to get too much don't do too much before you get in there so just just a little bit then put in a design then next one so don't put in so much that you can't reach like if you had a i think about if you had a pounder that was you know you you can't reach all the way over there when you want to put in your your little pieces and then I, I, we finally got all the way through. I put in all of the little mosaic pieces, traced that thing again, and over the top of this, you cover that with spec mix. Now I, this is one thing that I, I was thinking, no, oh, that's not right. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Let's not do that because I worked so hard and now I'm gonna cover them up. This doesn't make sense, right? I got this whole thing and now I'm going to cover it all up um, but it's really important to cover it all up because this is what like when you tile in your bathroom or whatever this is what it's the grout in there that's going to keep the stuff in there right so so you got to have all of those little extra spaces all of the little indentations covered so the next thing that happens is you're gonna wait and it's probably gonna take three or four hours, but it might take you longer, it might take you less time, depends on the time. But then you get like a brush, a scrub brush or a, a lighter brush and a hose and you start to kind of clean off the top layer of that spec mix. So now it reveals your mosaic tile. And I and we did this about four times. I had four different pictures. So at the end, we're at number four there. That's the end. We we aren't washing it anymore. We're pretty happy. It it doesn't look like we've uh, 
we've taken away too much. And I think the thing that's important here is when you start to do this, if you start to wash it off and it looks like you're taking too much out and the, and the little mosaic tiles are too exposed, you know, then what can happen? Right? They're going to they're gonna come out. So you want to be very, very careful that you don't scrub that whole thing out and then remove all of the stuff that hold them because mosaic tiles are, are in, you know, these little rocks, they need something around them. So did that about four times, three or four times, um, and ended up um, till, until we were happy. This is... Um, we have a question. Oh, yes. The slide that I see on my uh, computer is still just showing uh, the products, the cement oh. bag, etc. Never changed yes. to show the other step. Uh oh. So she, did you hear that? At least on yeah. my computer. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is new. Okay, so. Yeah, these are all new. Talk you were at 14. One. It said, oh, I don't see it now. I think it left off on 14. Yeah, so this, you haven't seen this one yet? No, this is a new view. You want to go? Okay, uh -huh. I'll just do a real quick review here. So uh, in this case here, we the previous slide was, was uh, the spec mix. We mixed it up and put the dye in. Right. And then in the next slide, we now I made sure that I put the design, I traced the design into, we poured the spec mix into the form and trawled it smooth. And then I traced the design on it so I could see what the outline was. And then I proceeded to put the tiles in each, in each of those designs. And at the end there, we have covered the entire mosaic with Specmans. With what? Could I add that yeah. on, on, after you cover that on the, on the bottom right, um, you know, we had our two uh, side rails, and you just do the, all you do is put the, have a two by four or a level, and you just pop that down so it's nice and even on the top. Yeah, oh, that's very good. Yeah, very good to know that you you can use a two by four across those levels so that. That, that material is level and clean across the top. Then this, do you see this slide? 16. Mikhail? Yeah, there are four pictures, one, two, three, four. Right, and at this situation, you, uh, after it's dried for three or four hours, you uh, use a brush and a light hosing to remove the top layer of spec mix. And you have to be very, very careful that you don't remove all the spec mix. And so you have to be careful there that you don't end up with too big of grooves. And you finally on number picture four, that is where we stopped. We were happy with the reveal of the mosaic. And now do you see this one? Yes. Okay. Okay, now sealant, uh, again, this sealant is about $20 a gallon. But I'm telling you, we didn't use very much, maybe two cups, I don't know, three cups. Uh, <clears throat> it's really to prevent wear against the elements. And you have to wait a couple days, maybe two, three days. You want that whole thing to be pretty dry before you put that sealant on. And it was supposed to be uh, prevent, uh, you know, damage from the elements. Frankly, what I was after is I wanted it to be shiny. <laughs> That's what I wanted. I wanted it to look shiny. And I, actually, I think I might want to put more on there. I want it to be a little shinier. I like that wet look of a mosaic. And especially on stones, I think rocks look prettier when they're wet. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> again... I didn't do it all by myself. Bruce is on his hands and knees here, <laughs> rolling this sealant on. And this took a while to dry, but we 
we made it through the season, so we're thinking it might might help. Uh, we might have to put more on. Uh, the jury's still out on what we think about season, I think, right? <laughs> and then you're at the end. And that's when you take pictures and you enjoy and you brag about all the work that you did. And I am now, uh, if you have questions, I made sure that Bruce came with because as a Mason, he knows all of these materials. He can talk to you about the materials and hints that you might uh, need to consider. I would say, just make sure that if you're going to start doing this, don't go overboard. You know, start small <laughs> before you uh, before you embark on the big mosaic that's like those ones you saw at the opening. So, questions? The ceiling goes over the whole section, um, not just the mosaic, right? Right. The the question is: Does the ceiling go over just the mosaic, or over, over the entire walkway? It goes over the entire walkway. Mm -hmm. Any other? Yes. So you were saying don't make your, um, you know, your cross or whatever too big so that you're trying to reach really far to get the rocks in there and you can't reach it. So I was wondering if you, but you did have something big like that. If you, um, like made your little fish in a form here, um, you know, like say you had a circle or something and you made your little fish in the circle and it dried and then you put like a circle here, a circle here, a circle here, and then you put spec mix over all of that because your, your frame was so big that you couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, so, uh, one of the things that somebody also said to me about what could I make them, you see, you if you go, can you repeat her question? Oh, I'm sorry. So the question was, is we have, what if you made circles? Could you, could you make your, your, uh, your design in a circle and then put those circles inside the middle of the spec mix and pour the, pour the spec mix around them? And are you saying that you would make the mosaic circle first? Yes. 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 And so. Um, well, I, I was just thinking, I was thinking flowers. What if I wanted to do flowers? And I'd say I had one flat, like I had a rose here and I had a carnation here and I had a daisy over here. But my, my frame would be so big that. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I bet you know, if you have some planks and stuff, you can make it like a little, a little bit bigger, form. you know, to get, to get where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So that's one idea. Oh, okay. Or you could use, a, like you were saying, maybe a little, maybe a little form of some mesh underneath that you could just push down into the, into the mortar and, and, and it stays there. Yeah, like if I took, if mm -hmm. I took like a five gallon bucket, and I had it cut down to about this, and then I put spec mix in that, and I made my mosaic in that for my flower, and then I let that dry and took it out, and then I made a different flower, and then I could make a, a larger frame, and then just put my each little circle of the individual flower, and then put spec mix all, all around that, because I couldn't say You're like, gonna need to cut off tail in? No, no. So, so I, I pop it out, and, right? Right. So pop it out. The, the same I frame was an eight by eight, and then I had six flowers inside of that. I wouldn't be able to stand on the edge of the frame and reach to the center of that. That would be too far away. But if I made my own little flowers first oh, okay. and dried them, and then set them around, and then put mm -hmm. spec mix over yeah. that. Yeah, and I so this is a lot like. Um, when you go to Home Depot or whatever, you can see, you can buy those round, uh, like stepping stones, right? And there's some of them look like pebbles, some of them have whatever. You can buy those and put them just like, you know, a stepping stone path. But you could make 
uh, just, you know, just make a little frame, use the bucket cut off or whatever, because it might be hard to get it out of there. If it's too deep. But if you made the made a mosaic of that and you let it dry, and then you took that circular thing and then you laid it inside your form and then poured spec mix around there. And I, I think I've seen uh, some people say, well, you know, could you could you buy those or use those tiles and then pour concrete around it? Uh, concrete though does have rock, so it's not as it's not as easy on things. But you could certainly do that. The one thing that I was saying on the um, you know not reaching in is I was just saying don't pour too much spec mix in there so you can't get can't reach. You know, don't go just. Do as far as you can reach, so that would be helpful. But that is a good idea. I think that that could work, and it'd be pretty, you know. You and then you could use them anywhere as well. Other questions? Yes. Okay. Can you only within just a little space at a time with the mortar set, mortar set up real fast? I'll repeat the question. Can yeah. She said, can you do you can you only work how fast do you have to do this? Yeah, if it's you know, that little section 16 off, we, we didn't have any trouble. In fact, you, when you first start out, uh, you say, well, let's give her a try and see if it well if the pebbles start moving along, so say no, we gotta give it more time to, to let it let the mortar zap, you know. And then you can it, it's easy to sweep that top layer off. And then uh, but you don't want to get you don't want to do too soon before the water kind of the air goes or the, the, the moisture moves out of some of it and kind of grabs the stone. Right. Uh, so, so for the people in the back uh, online, uh, the question is: is you know, do I have to? You know, how basically how fast do I have to work before it dries up? You know, if I'm if I'm keep adding to a, a sidewalk. We didn't have any trouble. We didn't have any trouble doing that in our six foot space, even with, you know, putting the material in and then pouring the next next set. I think you if you were worried that it was going to dry up on you and it was going to take you maybe you're slow. Maybe you're just a slow cook and you can't you can't get that thing the way you want it. Then you might think about putting a uh, board have you seen like on a sidewalk the sections of sidewalk they put a little board there so that'll be the end of that section you know and that and you can wait there and then maybe tomorrow you come and you work on the next on the next spot you you might be able to do that but we didn't experience uh rapid drying it might well, yes well, it was probably it was pretty hot when we were out there. I mean, not like today, by the way. It was it was probably seventy five or so. You know, so it was nice. Yes. So I really like your rock. Now, where did you say you got them? There's a gravel yard. I don't know what the name of it is. It's it's down south of town by past. This is where the. Um... The high of 95 goes to Blackfoot, and then the other one goes up. The other, the other way goes up to 515. Oh, that Wolverine? Wolverine? Is that Wolverine? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's on the yellow side. That's right. It's on the south and east of the Yeah. I think it's HK is the contractor there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and they're very nice. I mean, you're on your own. <laughs> you walk in there, you know, they're, they're used to dealing with contractors that tone with their trucks. They, they really don't, don't, you know, they aren't going to wa wander around with you. They'll just ask you what you have and they'll charge you 10 bucks. And maybe tomorrow they'll charge you three bucks. Who knows? They are, it is, it probably isn't very consistent. <laughs> Any other questions? Any questions online? I'll see you.
Any final remarks you want to make? No, I I would say it's a nice thing to try. Uh, you, it, I think it added to my yard. I'm happy with it. I don't know now, having done all of that, I don't know how much more I would do. I might try what your suggestion is of making uh, a mosaic that is a smaller uh, thing that you that you could do. But I think it improves the yard. And if you're out in your yard a lot, I garden a lot and I, I just like to be out and I think it, it just adds a little little something different to standard concrete. Uh, one thing I would say uh, for, uh, because Alan asked this question earlier, and that is, how does it hold up in the weather, right? You know, all sidewalks crack. I don't, I don't know. If you have a sidewalk that's never cracked, call us. Because <laughs> <laughs> we never saw that, right? But they all crack. Uh, we haven't seen any cracking yet, and but it doesn't get a lot of use there. It doesn't get a lot of wear, but it certainly has gotten cold, and the, you know it's been covered with snow. We might try the sealant. We might try to do just a little bit more uh, uh, sealant to protect it. But I think it's it's going to make it. And even if there's a minor crack, I can I can live with that. How close is which side of the house? It is on the is it on the west side of the house? It's on the west side west side of the house and the west northwest side. So it's on the north side of the house and west. Very close to the house. Well, the the sidewalk goes right up the mosaic right up to the edge of the house, and oh. then the other end goes right next to the driveway. So it it seems to be doing well. Uh, uh, up about maybe a foot to in the winter, you know, we don't get a lot of snow right up next to the house because it's under the eaves there and whatever. But there's certainly a lot out by the driveway. So Bruce, did you have any remarks you want to add? Well, you know, what the uh, what cracks concrete up is uh, Freeze thaw cycle. When, it, when uh, if there's water there, water expands and it freezes. And so if you have a little crack, it's you know over time it's going to push it off, push it off, make the crack bigger, and find another spot that that it's going to get a, uh, where it's going to freeze and, and push a little bit. So that's what you want to avoid. And then in our place, you know, we we shovel that driveway right next to it, and it's just covered with. So all winter, so um, you know there's there's uh, not many freeze thaw cycles, but also my my former life I used to repair uh, chimney tops, and that's where you get it. Uh, you know uh, freeze thaw cycles in southeast Idaho in the winter, where it, it gets above freezing and then below freezing, and it works on the on the bricks. That's that's uh, there's lots of them in Southeast Idaho, free stuff, so you want to avoid that. Right. Which is important for making sure that when you're when you're spraying off the spec picks that you don't spray off too much because you don't want to have create spots where water can sink in there and stay there, right? Well, thank you all for coming. <laughs> I will uh, send a lit material list if you are, um, I don't know, you have the list of attendees, so I'll send a material list out if you you don't have to take a list of, of those. And, and if you need anything else, I guess you can email me and uh, I'll send it to you and good luck with your mosaic. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you.